Hello there, and welcome to the Hale Zone Apostolic Church. Apostolic meaning what God says, not what man does. Please enjoy this teaching and feel free to share it with all who will listen. May you go forth in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we just come to you again, Lord. Thanks, Lord. Thank you for, thank you for staying with us, Father. You know what it's like. You know what we're like, Father. You made us. You created us. You know, much farther we, we get stuck in many, many different things, different thoughts and dreams and you name it, Father, activities. It's, it's quite amazing how every person, no matter who they are or what they do, seem always to be busy. And Father, how can we be too busy to be with you, Lord? I personally thank you again, Lord, for this week, for, for giving me that desire, Father, to begin, Lord, to just put down, Father, all the thoughts that I've been thinking about your word, Father, and people and, and circumstances, Father. It, it has really helped me this week, Father, to become settled in my spirit again to be able to know that no matter where we've been, how far we go away, no matter how many U-turns, no matter how many times we walk off the path or get stuck at a red sign, whatever it is, all we have to do is come back. Forgive me, Lord. And you'll forgive us. And you'll pick us up and put us back on that narrow path that leads to life. So, Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for already this morning, Father, the, the spirit that is here, Father, today, your spirit. And you see, it doesn't matter where we've been in the week, does it, Lord? We're coming to you to be in your presence. We expect to be. We, we expect you to be here. We expect you to minister to us. We expect, Father, to, for you to listen to our worship and praise. And I know, Father, that the angels, Father, will celebrate our, the way that we even worship this morning, Father. So we might only think there's a few. But I bet if we could see those heavenly places now, we'd probably have a few thousand angels singing with us. Because as we worship, we're worshipping too to God Almighty. So thanks, Lord. Be with us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I had a fascinating uh, time on um, Friday morning. And I'm trying to make it every Friday, my, my pastor friend who, who just wants to come and have, I think he wants to come and have a, um, you know, a, a psychological meeting, I think, you know. Uh, but we never do that. We get straight into the spirit. And God has been absolutely amazing um, just to open even my understanding as well as his of, of what's going on uh, within this world and what's going on with us at this moment. So it's been a, a really blessed time, very spiritual time. And I'm just thankful for God. <laughs> Our conversation started... Um, on Friday morning was Mark who's in control and I went well I know it's not me you know like you know and it really just was quite an amazing time then as we then spent a couple of hours in getting into scripture and praying and just, just an amazing time but who is in control One more week has gone by. Chaos and confusion and lies, lies and more lies. The statements people keep making get more ridiculous as the week goes on. Did you know this country has millions of children that are starving? 
Did you know that uh, public services service employees cannot live on 27 to 34,000 pounds a year? I don't think any of them can be married or have a partner because I'd like to know how much their partners earn. Hmm. Well, partners, whatever the description this, this crazy world likes to put on non-married people of any sort, anywhere, it's a mess. The Bible says, oh, no man anything. And what it means is that we've got to be really careful. And the Bible also tells us that the borrower is slave to the lender. So we look at our country now. Does anybody keep listening to this statement? This country is rich. We should be helping everyone. This country is in debt. I looked this morning just to make sure I've got the up to minute debt calculation. It is 2.78 trillion pounds we the people of the UK owe that we've borrowed hold on a minute hold on a minute does anybody know a rich person that has no money and is in debt is it me or, or, or am I just speaking stupidity if we're rich Shouldn't we have lots of money? Some people are rich. But of course, this crazy world want to drag them down to their level. They don't want to pick people up to their level. They want to drag them down. 2.78 trillion I looked at. And then I looked at how much pension our public services are going to receive. We are 4.8 trillion in debt we owe it <laughs> I've never heard of anyone being rich without any money and that's in debt we it's chaos, it's a lie it's a lie does anybody know what a trillion pounds is? it's a lot of money it is one million million pounds one million bundles of million pounds you got that? Yeah. one with how many noughts? Oh, some, some clever people here. 12 noughts. America have got 18, but don't say anything. <laughs> don't say anything. If you owned a trillion pounds, could you be rich? Absolutely. And if you spent <laughs> one million pounds a day, if you had this, if you had this money, it would take you just under 2,740 years to spend it. Amen. Isn't it incredible? I promise you this country is not rich anymore. It is not rich. Not rich in earthly terms and not rich in spiritual terms. It is bankrupt in both of them. Our governments have been overspending for years and we know COVID has, has really actually destroyed whatever else we was trying to do and with all the arguments about it, um, you know, even the conservatives used to pride themselves in reducing debt to make the nation richer so they can sp help to spend more money to help the needy. But even they have lost the way. And at this moment, we are in absolute chaos. We're letting thousands of illegal immigrants come into this country. We put them in hotels. We feed them. We clothe them. We give them spending money. And we haven't got a clue who they are and what their backgrounds are. And some of them, we don't even know where they are now. And we can't help our own people. Something is wrong. This is not something decent in order like our God says. 
And I only say this because of the farce that we've got with our public service, everyone asking for a rise, for more money for everyone. And they think it's from the government. I've got a rude awakening from them. It is not from the government. It is from the private sector. That's where the money comes from. So if we don't support our private sector, how are we going to create the wealth to be able to help others? Ha, simple, isn't it? It is, is incredible. So we've got it all drastically wrong at the moment. No matter what, what party you want to do, everything is absolutely wrong. It is, it is, it is having no wisdom at all. This country has gone away from God. And it's just the same as that Psalm 80 today, where those Asaphites were crying out to God. Four times I read this morning, it said in there, they cried out to God because their country was in trouble. It was, it was, the hedges had been taken away. What God had done is put a hedge around the whole of Israel. And because they'd gone away from God and all their principles and didn't look to him and went their own way, he took the hedge around out from them we can look at it as a natural hedge but it's the spiritual hedge and the Assyrians come and did it and they were destroyed and everyone was going oh no what happened it's because they turned away from the principles and morals and rules and regulations the things that are right to give them a blessing that country is exactly the same today turning away from God. We are in the biggest mess that we've ever had in this country. How many people need Jesus Christ now? How many people are complaining about everything? How many people need this hope that we've got that no matter what goes on, that if we stay with our Lord Jesus Christ, he'll deliver us from all this evil, all this mess. And if we carry on and follow him, put in him first and don't deny him and do what he asks, we can even still have peace and joy right now and hope that when it's all finished, we shall be with Jesus all of us and our families in heaven. <laughs> I have really strange thoughts when I'm thinking of these things, I promise you. It is some crazy stuff comes into my head. And I think, I think, well, okay, let's do it logically. There are some of these people that need our help. There are people that need our help, this country's help, and I, I understand that. Uh, but not the way it's happening today. And I, I was began to wonder, all these people that are passing our laws and all the civil servants that uh, uh, seem, to be, seem to be going against everything and trying to control everything. And I'm thinking, great. If they think it's the right thing to do, I wonder if they would help us. I wonder if they would help us. And take one or two of these immigrants into their own homes just for a while while we sort it out oh I wish I was the dictator I would really help people hallelujah forgive me Lord Jesus <laughs> amen <laughs> amen We've got to keep going. We've got to keep learning. And that's it. It, it is, that, it, it is that, that keep going. It's that endurance that, that God is training us to. And we've got to have this endurance. Because you can see what's happening. It is easy to fall under. It is easy to stop. It's easy to go, oh, poor me. It's easy to do all those things. It's easy to say, well, I'm just going to do this for a while instead. It's easy for us to make our decisions that we want to do. Every one of us will make the decision what we want to do. And most of the time you'll put it in front of Christ. Huh. That's why. 
We need to keep learning. <laughs> it's why we should meet time and time again. That's why we should exhort one another. That's why we should talk to one another. That's why we should, you know, discipline each other. Anybody like to be disciplined? Oh, well, hallelujah. <laughs> Kevin has learned. To, uh, he's, learned he's learned to say yes at least. Hallelujah. Kevin, I remember going to a minister's meeting and I said, anybody like being disciplined? I was the only one to put my hand up. And they, and they looked at me and went, oh, here he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're still saying, oh, here he goes. Here he goes again. Here he goes again. Got to be something different, you know. And I said, you know, and I could hear, I could hear the murmuring. I said, listen very carefully. When the Lord Jesus Christ disciplines me, and tells me why I'm going through tribulations and all the pain that I'm going through and it is for strengthening me because there's a time that's going to come when the, fit, when the battle will get fiercer than it's ever been before and if you haven't got strong faith, you'll fold. You'll fold. You won't have any strength. You won't, who are you going to go to? Who are you going to go to? Some, some bishop? That says it's okay now to have same-sex relationships. We ought to bless it. What Bible are they reading? I think it begins with the letter S. Oh, hallelujah. I knew somebody would be listening. Thank you, brother. It's, it's important we do because it's important. It's the only way we're going to strengthen our faith is to keep learning. Keep getting together. Keep putting into practice what God has added. Because I tell you, there's going to be, there's going to be an ever increasing fury of a spiritual battle. Not just a battle, a fury. Because as the time gets nearer, the devil will get stronger and stronger and try more and more. Look what it's done to our society. That's who's behind it all. <laughs> but we are facing. <laughs> An even worse time to come. So don't think this is it. This is only the beginning of sorrows. Go and have a look in, 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 in Matthew is it 24. This is only the beginning of sorrows. In other words, we're going to get more. It's incredible. But I have some words of God this morning. Which are so incredible. And we have to take these and hold them steadfast, stand fast. Hold it, like, hold it like it's a six-inch nail that's into a plank of wood, and if you let go, you die. We'd hold it fast, wouldn't we? And that's what we ought to do to this Word of God. Romans 5, 20, 21 says this, But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The more that sin abounds around us, the more that, that more we're in the battle, the more God will give us grace. He'll give us that extra strength, all the things, the extra love, the extra faith to be able for to withstand all the wiles of the enemy, enemy and you will stand strong. That's why we have the Word of God. We know. We've seen this. Listen carefully. God had a plan from before the world was formed. Isn't that incredible? Before the world was formed. And I've had this conversation that this week about evolution. I can't hard to say it. You know, it's um, evolution. And I said, oh, yes. I said, I said I'm just going to say one thing to you. If evolution makes us all better, then what, what's happened to our evolution? We've gone backwards. It's a disgusting, confused, vile, immoral, destructive world we live in. But this is our time for mankind upon this earth. It's a short time for God because he's eternal. There's no time for him. Oh, you believe that stupid story somebody said to me that God created, created the world in six days? I said, you're calling God stupid? 
I said, chap, you better be careful. I said, if he's real, I can see who's going to be stupid at the end. And he said, six days. I said, listen to me, I'll just give you one scripture just to tell you. Oh, I'll give you a couple. A thousand days is but a day to God. And a day is but a thousand years. And if God is eternal, where there's no beginning and no end, time is irrelevant. A day for God could be 10 billion years and we would not have a clue. And we haven't even got a clue what God's doing with time now. But I know, because the scripture tells me that the Lord said, I shall shorten the days just for the elect. So we won't have longer days. Isn't that amazing? We can't comprehend it. <laughs> it's incomprehensible that God could shorten our day and we would never clue that he has. Mm. That's God. He created us with the worst thing that he could have created us with. Free will. He did it because he wanted man to choose. Mankind to choose. To seek him. To search for him. And people say, oh, what Mark, you know. I said, look, ain't not one person, even the scientists can't tell me how the whole world works together just for human beings to live. Incredible. It's choose to follow him. It's choose to learn of him. It's, it's to choose whether we follow his commandments the word of God there's no other word it's there forever, never changes and to choose to put him first in our lives <laughs> I said this, somehow God has called people into his kingdom and taught them the truth somehow he has hasn't he and, I, and we're all different, we've come to the Lord all in different ways, but somehow he does that, and we know what it is he draws every man to him by his spirit and we are the blessed ones, we answered the call and we know what God wants for the world we know he wants all the world to be saved all men to be saved but also because of the amazing word of God, we also know that not all men will make it. Matthew 7, 13, 14 says this. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many which go thereat. Why? Because straight is the gate. Narrow is the way which leads to life. And there's only a few that find it. Isn't that incredible? So all our prayers and everything else, but don't forget, we've just got to be part of that few first. That's important for us and our families. Another, another passage, Luke 13, 24 to 28. This just repeats it but in, in a, a, more, a more detailed way strive I love this now this is, this, these are the words that I like strive to enter in at the straight gate come on, let's put some effort into it for many I say unto you will seek to enter and shall not be able when once the master of the house is risen up and has shut the door, so that's it, he's woke up now and shut the doors, and Jesus Christ comes back, he shuts the doors now, you've, you've had your chance, and you begin to stand without, and you knock at the door, say, Lord, Lord, open to us, and he shall answer and say to you, I not know who you are. And these might be people that say they go to church and all these things. Then they shall say, begin to say, oh, but 
Lord, have we not eaten and drunk in your presence? And have we not taught in your streets? He'll say, I tell you. Who are you? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. So even some Christians are going to think they're there, but don't do what the Lord has asked them to do, or do it because they say, look at me, pride and all those other sins that we've got. And what will happen? They'll be weeping and a gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. And then those others are thrust out. It's powerful stuff, isn't it? Making it very clear what we, the born again, spirit filled, Jesus name, baptism, repentance every day, have got to be like. If God wants all men to be saved, it really puts the emphasis on man to see whether God is real or not. Isn't that fascinating? And at least to have a look and find out if God is real. And that beautiful little scripture is, come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. So isn't it, isn't it pleasant there? Come and taste it. Come, just come and have a look. And that's all he's asking people to do. <laughs> but man is so wrapped up in itself. It is the me, 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 me and I culture. No matter what we say, it's a syndrome of the majority of people and a lot of it are saying, well, I'm just trying to gear on in life. And that's, and that's a massive difference in people's thinking you know, for it, all, all over the world. But now the world following similar patterns of man throughout the nations now. Must get an education is, you know, for everyone. Must get an education. Doesn't, doesn't tell you what kind of an education, but he must get an education. Must get good qualifications, must get a good job. And, you know, and this goes for men and women alike now today because the world has declared everyone is equal and, 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 and it is, it, 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 it's more unequal than it's ever been. I don't care what anybody says to me. And we do know today that the majority don't believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. They believe in equal of opportunity, they believe in equal pay, and they, they'll fight tooth and nail for their individual right and, 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 and demand it's their right to have what they want. What? A crazy world. They are impervious to anyone else's needs. And all these people say, well, I do this and I do that. I said, stop. You telling everyone else what they've all got to do. You do what you can do. Do you go and help people? Or do you just keep gobbing off and telling other people to pay money to help other people? Mmm. It's irrelevant about everyone else these days. Welcome to our lovely world. This lovely battlefield of the souls, the minds and hearts of people. Good and evil is still here. Every story you have, every film they make, the majority, the vast majority is just about good and evil. And mankind, mankind can't even decide any what's good anymore and what is evil. For now, they've done a real, another one of these incredible things. They are now preaching scripture. Isn't it amazing? They're calling the good evil and the evil God. The Bible said in the end times that would happen. And out of, the, out of their mouths, the devil's coming. It's incredible. <laughs> Here we go. They can't even tell me what a woman is. Nuts. Absolutely nuts. I put, I, put, I put a word here, and it goes all the way along the thing, and it's ah. 
are. <laughs> uh, may the Lord have mercy on your soul, uh, Kevin, this morning. I think the time for repentance is here. Uh, time is repentance here. I think you ought to get on your hands and knees and prostrate yourself. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, look, what a mixed up world we're in now. It's just total confusion. And chaos all over the world now. Therefore, we know this isn't of God. For God is not the author of confusion. He's the one that's put everything decent and in order. Even our bodies, he's made like that so everything works together for your good. Amazing God. Do you know why? It's so simple. This world has broken every strand of morality that we've had. They've done it up most to break families up for dysfunctional families. They've destroyed every type of goodness that the church used to do. And I'm not just blaming the devil now, I'm blaming the devil in the church. You know, it's incredible. And you know, it, you know our, our culture now is do whatever you feel, whatever you think, do what pleases you. Don't have, don't have any thoughts for anyone else. And of course, what does it create? Utter confusion, utter chaos, the, you know, disruption between families and everything else. And even in our speech, even our speech, we don't even know whether people are a he, she, or a nit anymore. It's got crazy, way out, of, way out of hand. My poor kids are going to grow up not even understanding English. It's horrendous. And we've got these schools teaching the most horrible stuff about church and, oh, you name it. But I tell you what, but I know this word is an infallible word of God. It never contradicts itself. It's here to help every person to be strengthened in this life, to give them direction of everything they should be doing. And also it, it is. And you know that, the, that, that, that this, this man's thinking is infiltrating the church all over the world. And that's why we're getting these bishops and, and archbishops all over the world stating things which are not from the Bible and it's what man wanted to do so we could be, to be all inclusive and show that, you know, we're not narrow-minded and everything is. And yet we've just read that the Word of God is narrow. It is narrow. It's a narrow path. It's the only way to heaven. It's the only way to peace. And it's the only way that we will change this world what Bible do they read what do they study if they study oh Lord have mercy upon these people I pray God change their minds and hearts Lord in Jesus name Listen to these following scriptures then, just to, just to help you decide to get the right conclusion of, of what I'm preaching this morning. Because don't forget, who's in control? Leviticus 18.22. And this is, this is in Leviticus, the laws of God, right from the beginning, and we should be learning those. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination to me, says the Lord. Is, is that clear enough? That's just a simple one. For, let's, just do, let's just do homosexuality, LGBT. Let's do trans, shall we? <laughs> Deuteronomy 22, 5. A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment for all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. What Bible are they reading? Must be the message. And this is what it is. It's a battle of our minds. The battle is this, this weak flesh against the Spirit of God. Romans 7.14 I love this. And I would like anyone to say they've never gone through, gone through this. Romans 7.14 For we know that the law is spiritual. 
Although, although the Lord in the argument, you know, it was what, you know, it was the words, we have the spirit, they didn't, but we still know it's spiritual because that's the only way it proves sin. For I am carnal. That's us, isn't it? Sold unto sin, yes? We're all sinners and we were born into sin. For what am I doing? I do not understand. <laughs> For what I will do, what I will to do, that I do not practice. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that us? But what I hate, then I do. Oh, I'll never do this, Mark. Oh, I'll do this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. If then I do what I will not to do, I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good okay so it shows us sin but now it is no longer I who do it but sin that dwells in me it's in me for I know that in me that's in my flesh nothing good dwells so without the spirit of God we're just a sinner and in that flesh dwells sin Mm, incredible, isn't it? For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it but the sin that dwells in me. That's your battle against flesh versus spirit. So simple. So simple. The reason why we don't do what we say we're going to do is because the flesh is weak. But here it is then. Just carrying on now. Romans 21, 7, 21. I find then a law that evil is present with me how far is it away the scripture says it's at the door remember the one who wills to do good for I delight in the law of God according to the inward man don't we love coming to church? Don't we love singing these songs? Don't we feel good? And don't we, don't, you, know, we, you know, we feel the presence of God and, and we know that we're, we're all right, but it's not just that then, is it? That's got to be transferred out into our daily life. But I see another law in my members, in, 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 in my flesh, warring against the, the law of my mind, the, what we want to do for God. And bringing me into captivity of the law of sin, which is in my flesh, in my members. Paul says this, don't forget this is Paul the Apostle, <coughs> that God used so mightily to bring this to all the Gentile nations of the world. A wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Oh, I love the next bit. It's just beautiful. Here's your answer. I thank God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we can escape it. That's why he give us this spirit. That's why he's given us all these words for us. Why? So when we got this gift of the Spirit, then the, on the list of, of the Spirit that God gives us, what's the ninth one? The fruit of the Spirit, sorry. Self-control. Control. Isn't it amazing? All of that stuff we've just done. And God says, when I'm, I'm, I'm working on you to get rid of all this stuff out. I'm working on you to have more love and more faith and more joy and more patience and more doing good and, and all these things and self-control. Who is in control? 
who is in control? Hey, I've, 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 I've got some lovely things for you to now. Has God turned the power off? Is it incredible? Because you know, I, the, the reason that why that happened is I went to put my fountain on because the, the chap said there's something wrong with it, and I said, well, I'm going to try something else, and I did, and it came on. I said, well, the power's on, and as soon as I said the power's on, it turned off. I thought, oh, great. And so I said, so, so I was thinking about Christians then. This is how my mind works. Has God turned your power off? Hmm. No. It is us. If we go in the flesh, in whatever we do, we shall reap flesh and corruption. That's why in the, in the flesh, it always takes control. And we say things like this. And we don't say, you know, I believe it in our subconscious. I'm not going to do that anymore. I don't like doing that. Oh, I'm not going to do that, that, that again. I failed last time and all the rest of it. You know, I, it's probably subconscious. I don't think we do that. So, if we feel like that, who is in control? God or us? Yeah, well, that's, I was just waiting for you to get to the question. You, see, you, you, you preempted it. So, thank you. you thank you. Listen, God called us and he anointed us to preach this gospel. Anointed us with the power of God and the wisdom of God and we're learning to, so we can bring all these things back into mind when, when we're doing it, when we walk in the Spirit. He, called, he anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor, to set the captives free and to release the prisoners who were bound. We know that all these things are people who were bound in prison, in captivity of their, of their sinful nature. It's pretty easy to see. And if we're not careful, we'll bind ourselves to our own emotions and our own fleshly desires and not to be bound with God in the Spirit. Where he asks us to bring the good news to everyone we meet through our testimonies, defeat the demons and break in into the hearts of the mind of lust by pulling down their strongholds, you know, speaking that name of Jesus over the depression they've got and the oppression and the confusion they have. Those are all the things that God gives us to do, the power to do it, the self-control to control ourselves. I forgot it was prayer meeting on Wednesday. I'd got, I got a teaching on fasting. And it's quite fascinating. But I'll fast forward it. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> every sin that a man does, every sin that a man does is outside the body. This is 1 Corinthians 6.18. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Ghost? Who is in you? Who you had from God? And you are not your own. For you were brought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. That puts it in perspective, doesn't it? It's fascinating, isn't it? We do all that. And then he tells us, hey, you're a temple of my Holy Spirit. If it was a temple that we built and, and it was beautiful, would you go and defile it? But we'll defile our own temple with our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Which are God's. Hello? By coming into the church, you said, I want to be in your family. Do you know he calls us servants in some passages? There's even one that says we're slaves. Isn't it incredible? And he tells me as a pastor who's going to teach and things like that, tells me, you better be careful what you teach. He said, because if you teach them anything wrong, 
it'll be worse than you he tells me that I've got to stand before God at the end and give an account for everyone who came into the church that's why I have to feed you and keep going no matter what goes on no matter what people do no matter what people say I'm going to continue even if only a few of us get there we've done a good job Amen Okay We hear about the church today and all on the TV and all these shows and everything else and so many people we had a great service and, and we had so many people give their life to Christ and they said the sinner's prayer and ended up saying I give my life to Christ and we say welcome into the kingdom of God that's the devil that's not God's word and we always hear so many preachers don't worry don't worry God is love God is full of grace God is mercy and Jewish forever and don't forget God is in control listen God can do whatever he wants he's a sovereign God he'd probably save people that we don't think are worth saving yeah, and then he'll save people that we never thought would get there I am not God all I know is the word of God and that's what I've got to give to people he can do anything he wants <laughs> just go to him before time speaks a world into existence and I love that one I mean, I've probably told you this many times before and then he created the sun and then he created then he created the, you know, the moon for the day and the sun, sun you know, to give warmth to the earth and then, and then he created the, you know, the, the heavens and then, then it says oh and then he put a load of stars up you know like a, you know like a, this is this is my throwaway bit like you know oh Alan trillions and trillions and trillions we've no what a trillion is now trillion 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 stars like you know you know I am, hey hey that's what he can do what he's given us though is to tell us that he's all-knowing he's ever pre he's ever present with everyone and he's everywhere and he is almighty the whole world in all their wisdom together doesn't even come up if there's a bottom bottom of God's wisdom there he puts it in perspective God's wisdom has against man's he will not control us if we want to sit if we don't want to go to church if we don't want to go to Bible study if we don't want to read our Bibles and have the discipline in the morning if we don't want to tithe as God asks if we don't want to witness if we don't want to show our love to each other that's our choice the day that we lose control of our lives in the spirit is an amazing time to have I promise you not to have to think of what you're going to say but God then brings all those scriptures back into your head you open your mouth and you say things and you go oh that's incredible God he gives you revelation after revelation why? because we're in the spirit he gives us different visions and dreams because we're in the spirit and the scripture tells us that if we just try and follow him all the things even we desire if we're in the will of God if we are letting God have some control of our time then he shall give us the things and the blessings we so desire oh wow I have prayed many many times in my life that God would change my mind and my heart and that God would control every movement everything that I did in thought and speech but he said no and he said it to Paul when he said take away this thorn in my side and he'll say it to me and he'll say it to you no my grace is sufficient for you 
or show you your errors and allow you to, 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 to change. And he tells us then, don't worry when you slip up because my plan is forgiveness. Because I love you and I still want the best for you. And you come to me and ask me to forgive them and turn away from what you're doing. It's sufficient for you. He knows what we need before we ask and yet he has, tells us to ask every day because it shows our faith. As we go before him, it's by faith we witness. It's by attending church and Bible study. It's the listening to the words of God and action in them that grow our faith. It's by putting the words of God into, into our lives every single day. Trying so many times to be filled with the Holy Ghost. In the morning, in the afternoon, in the truck you're driving, in your break time, just trying to keep in touch with God. He gave you a spirit and to be able to control yourself. And you've been given that spirit of unconditional love that he loves us and that we should love each other, love God and keep his commandments. The spirit of boldness that he wants to give us to take away the fear the anxiety and the depression and the confusion of all the things that, that stop us from doing what God wants us to do. <coughs> but he tells us, do not fear what man can do or say to you. That's where we should have the fear of God. It is he that can bless us. It is he that can do these things. No one else. We will accept the tribulations that we receive, knowing they will show us where we are in spirit and in faith. And our actions will show us where our faith is. Do you know when we control every decision that we make without taking the counsel of God or without others the majority will be wrong it's because they suit us in the way we think and feel just like the world and we make those decisions pretending that we are in control man it's a battle it is a battle and we've got to get the strength of it. And the only way we get strength in anything we do is to practice it. The more you practice lifting weights, the more weight you can do. The more you practice fasting, the more you can fast. It's the same with everything. We have these incredible scriptures. Fight the good fight. Endure hardships like a good soldier. No, God, I want a soft cloth. I want a soft pillow and a soft bed, you know, and I want, I want you just to, Lord, may you put a little bubble around me and so nothing comes into my head and, and the world's not there. Well, one day you'll have that, but it'll only be called heaven. You're actually on earth at the moment, so just, just you can have the dream for the future by all means, but that means we've got to do it there. He gives us this power to pull down the strongholds in the spirit, to bind the evil spirit in the name of Jesus, what we've said this morning. Release from heaven love and, and faith and, and, you know, and dreams and visions for our families all the time, over and over again. He's, he's, he's got the hosts of heaven. He turns around and says, we've even got an angel. Did you know that? Mm. And I'm not it. Hallelujah. I promise you that. I've got enough with my own. Hallelujah. It's incredible. Because it's from this, this trying to be with God that we get filled with this love and this faith and this forgiveness and this hope and then the peace to know we're going to get through it. Oh, I don't, I don't like what's happened in my family, but Father has brought me through. He did say that, didn't he? 
he did say that he would stay with us and not forsake us and he would see us through he would take us from the valley and then lift us up again he told us we'll take it out of the miry clay and put your feet upon a rock and put a new song into our mouths he's promised all these things and it is that we should go out to fight for the for our family souls defeat the enemy and get the angels to come with us and speak to people and fight in the spirit these are the things that that, that you know that that we can control isn't that amazing that we can send angels to places that's absolutely incredible but what do we want we want God to bring us out of this sinful life because he bought us with a price that blood of Jesus Christ so that daily he could wash us clean so daily he could give us faith so daily even when we feel so weak he says oh when you're weak I'll be strong when we go to him we'll have his strength and not ours we'll have his words and not ours we'll have his hopes and not ours we'll have his desires and not ours and in that way all these worldly systems and thinking and rubbish that's there he said don't worry I will even give you the mind of Christ to think upon good things virtuous things things that are good and not evil because that's our Lord Jesus Christ I finish off with just we talked about who's in control we actually know one of the things that we actually did even on your Alpha or Truth Reveal course it says the whole world is under the sway of the devil so what have we got to do fight it yes we've got to cast down every evil imagination that we have we've got to pray and read our Bible so we could have the mind of Christ and have compassion on those who are lost and who are bad we've got to think on the good things we've got to get stop thinking of the bad things get out of the past look to the future look what God can do with you and not what 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 the devil's doing with you now he's tail take every step he can to take you away from God he tells us to pray ceaselessly so we've got to pray every day for every decision that we want to make he tells us we are the salt of light we are the light of the world and that means God has filled us with that God has filled us with his spirit so we can be the light of the world he's teaching us the words so we'll be strong in strength and we'll know what the scriptures say to give an answer in season and out of season to be ready when we're not ready it is amazing that is God then when we've lost control we'll see the amazing things of God the miracles and all those things that he wants for us in Jesus name Father thank you thank you Lord we thank you for your word we thank you Lord that you're here we thank you Lord that you are God and you can help us at every step of the way and you want to help us isn't that amazing you want us to give us all these things the treasures of heaven you say well the wisdom the, you know the, the knowledge and the understanding the wisdom to use the skills of God the Word of God for it is the word that's quick and powerful for dividing even soul and spirit even bone and marrow that word gets into us and it can grow inside us so it's deep and we can bring it out at the right time that's the plan of God not of how much I've learned but how much God has taught me and put inside oh father help us Lord release us from our captivity set us free in our minds father that we can think of these good things think on the promises of God and not continually think of the miry clay that is trying to engulf each one of us every day 
wash us clean today Lord let's go out sparkling white Father as you cleanse us by your word and cleanse us by your spirit as we say Father forgive us again help us to change our ways and let us walk in the spirit daily with our Jesus in Jesus name